Hello and welcome back to Commander's Guide for XCOM. I'm Jade Star here with a very special guest today. I'm Guava Moment. No, wait. I'm um, I'm from the good Albertan city. Hello, everyone. I'm Skippy Granola. So nice to see you. Suck it, Edmonton. Suck it. Guava could be here, but he didn't want to put any actual work into my LP. Little baby bitch didn't want to do a second take. He's a uh, Guava Calculon. I do it in one take. Moment. Flawless acting <laughs> talent. <laughs> So I see you built a genetics lab. That's very exciting. It is. That's a thing I haven't actually played with in uh, Enemy Within. Oh god, you need to. Unfortunately, it means we have to listen to a lot of Valen. What we are going to do is stick guinea pig genes into your soldiers with the hopes of making them more fluffy. We are also going to chop off their genitals. <laughs> Terrible. He finds that the aliens will find this very distracting. Go on, please. <laughs> well, that, that throws any semblance of being serious about the genetic lab out the window. Uh, we only start out with, like, three mods, and we get more from the researching alien autopsies. But, uh, but screw it, I want, I want guinea pig soldiers now. Yes, please. So, you've gone with um, hyper-reactive pupils on this one. Plus 10 aim on any shot? Why did you go yes. with that? After a miss, uh, because that's our assault, and so rapid fire. Oh, very So you take rapid fire, if you miss the first one, you get plus 10 to the second one, and it almost breaks even. Not bad. Yeah, and the snipers get uh, 5 aim from height advantage, because they're snipers and they should be up high. Which is absolutely fantastic, with some of the skills and bonuses they can get. Yeah. Uh, damn good ground, and then flying armor. It all synergizes very well together. Thank you, Commander. I'll it's also very cheap on the metal scale. Oh, definitely. So, basically, this is like, uh... I mean, doing anything to your soldiers. It takes them out of rotation for a few days and costs a bit of melt, and then... So far, we've been limited to the yeah, exactly. Of existing human organs. Uh, three days per gene mod, and you can queue up like five of them at once if you want. Oh, cool. Uh, no. I usually have a tendency that if I ever put a good soldier in for more than three days, something important will happen while they're in the tubes. <laughs> of course. So is that the primary thing that you spend meld on in this game? Uh, those and the giant mech soldiers. Oh, gotcha, okay. And you can't gene up... Commander. Uh, oh. Our intelligence sources indicate that a previously unknown organization is attempting to undermine XCOM field operations. We believe this group harbors some misguided sympathies for the invaders and is intent on acquiring alien technology and artifacts critical to your efforts. Early reports indicate this organization calls itself Exalt. We trust you will isolate the source of this new threat and eliminate it. Commander, the Council has provided some additional resources to help us deal with these traitors. We can begin scanning for additional Exalt cell locations and launch covert operations to disrupt their activity via the Situation Room. And here's why it's a very special episode. Oh my good gracious. Jade Exalt Star. have appeared. There's, yeah. there's an enemy within humanity. <laughs> <laughs> <gasps> yes, Skiffy. Yes, there is. That's that's probably why it's it's named that for the expansion. Here's a question. Yeah. Why are they called E X A L T? Would it not be better just to call them like capital X A L T to be more thematic? Um. Hmm. I don't know. I got. I guess. They've, they've got to have their reasons. Maybe they didn't want confusion between Exalt and X Column. But maybe so that's their point. The either. Huh? Hearts and minds. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so here's a big mechanic, is that we have to send an operative on an undercover mission. Uh, for undercover missions, soldiers don't get their primary weapons, and they don't get armor. Uh, so typically what happens is that you end up giving uh, people a pistol, and uh, a lot of people use snipers. Uh, typically, you'll see a lot of people use snipers that have um, low profile and mimetic skin and gunslinger. People will even tool out... Uh, a sniper specifically to be the undercover operative throughout their game. To that, I say poppycock. You're sending in a rookie in a special covert jacket. Yeah, exactly. I'm just sending in a random rookie that I had in my barracks uh, with a nanofiber vest and a laser pistol. While people will go through uh, a lot of effort to make a special covert operative, it's of my opinion that that is incredibly unnecessary. I mean, I have three snipers on my team, 
I might end up doing that later, but it really is not necessary. Your covert operative is not that critical to the mission. We are on the threshold of a new kind of warfare. Our soldiers were already humanity's best warriors. Now see it covered in orange cush. Now, <laughs> as we learn from our fallen enemies, we can make their strengths our own. Oh yeah, I need a shower. Mmm, so <laughs> sticky. Unfortunately, uh, there is one small problem with this video. I did not apparently get Revenge of the Sleeves installed correctly. Oh no! Compensate much faster when they miss shots. So our soldiers will, in fact, not be having sleeves. Oh. Yeah. But a lot of fun things going on this uh, this video. We got Exalt. We got our Gene Lab going. Heavy lasers opens up some new weapons to us. Oh yes. Oh yes. Opens up my my favorite visually satisfying gun, the rail gun. Just the sound it makes, the visual thing it does, and the way it tends to make enemies fly away when it hits them. It's just all very satisfying. Is the railgun new for Enemy Within? It is. It is uh, a weapon for the uh, the mech soldiers. Oh my. Oh. You know what? Uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna just flip Guava Moment the bird here and say, really, <laughs> punchy mechs versus fucking railguns? Uh, you can have both. <gasps> <laughs> the new uh, the, the punch goes on the left hand, the railgun goes on the right hand. Oh, good gracious. Yeah, oh, you'll no. see. Uh, uh, since this was supposed to be an episode for Guava to commentate, I, uh, I brought both mechs along on this fight. Uh, so there's going to be two railguns. But he's not here, so get fucked, Guava. Oh, he's, he's going to be kicking himself for missing this. Hmm. This is also just me uh, selling off a bunch of the loot we got from Operation Slingshot to afford everything as quickly as possible. You remember when I first uh, got this game and I was streaming it and you, you hopped on the mumble to tell me oh, what yeah. I was doing wrong and I didn't even know you could sell alien bits? <laughs> <laughs> I, I do remember you getting uh, face hugged by a few chrysalids, yeah. Uh, <laughs> there was nothing I could do about that. <laughs> I, th I think we'll have to go back to the footage. <laughs> All right, let's go uh, save our operative. Oh yeah, Operation Burning Pain. Excellent. It's like when I LP. We look forward mm, to seeing so your sad. progress. So here we are. I uh, I didn't install Revenge of the Sleeves correctly, so let's try to get them like shoulder pads or something—a little bit of decency, you know. Just something to cover up those embarrassing arms of theirs. Yeah, and those weird little. Things in their biceps. Those, those nublets. Yeah, it's kind of strange. Your science nubs. Hello, kill steel. Yeah. Let's see, where's my? There's my mech. No, no, go back, cursor. There it is. Hey, there's our boy. Yeah. So, uh, tiny has our punch mech, and the other one has a flamethrower. Oh, far out. Oh, right, I remember what I did now. It's, it's been a little over a week since I played this because, you know, somebody doesn't want to do a second take. <clears throat> uh, Exalt aren't the most dangerous enemy, so I thought this was a good option or a good time to throw in some of our second, uh, second string people. Like, Ricky Gunderson isn't nearly as good as a sniper currently as Nidian, but it's Exalt. I don't, I don't feel like I need to take a colonel level sniper to deal with Exalt. Yeah, that, that makes sense. It's nice to have uh, kind of a gimme mission to train up some of your lower dudes. Yeah. Just in case the unthinkable happens. Oh, yes. Hello. I just love that railgun. It's, it's huge and it's powerful and it looks good. It sounds good. So mean. Oh, yeah. Tiny Turtle's looking pretty good. Heavy lasers? Fantastic. Yeah, we're, uh, we're, what, tier two around the board now. Just a 
Uh, that's Looks what I was looking for. There you go. Yeah, I, uh, I was missing the uh, the second slot on my assault there. Aha! Uh -huh. Alright. Uh, can you tase exalt people? Yes, you can. Oh my god, yes. Can then, can you interrogate them with the alien mind probe? Uh, no. Oh. Wait, the alien mind probe, what? Yeah, the can that you throw aliens in. Oh, 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 oh the, the actual alien containment unit with the, the probulator. Yeah. Uh, no, unfortunately you can't do that. That's a shame. I was looking forward to some war crimes. Well, I guess we do have two mechs with railguns, so we're pretty good on that front. <laughs> it's not a war crime, it's, uh... Um, enhanced soldierization. Sure, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Geneva Convention, but we're in France. Operating within France. Once strike one is in position to provide that an house. escort, our operative can complete the operation. So, Skippy, have you done exalt missions before? I totally have not got this far. Okay. <laughs> all right, then uh, Bradford will explain uh, how exalt missions work because they're all different. They're not like abduction missions where it's just you know kill stuff or. You know. Our operative was in position to transmit the data they'd acquired when exalt forces moved into their AO. The encoder is currently shielding our transmitter's position, but if Exalt manages to hack the encoder, they'll be able to locate the transmitter. If they hack both, any hope we had of recovering the data intact will be lost. Objective updated. Ah, I see. Yeah, so it's basically defend Objective A. If Objective A gets lost, defend Objective B. And that, that's really about it. Uh, especially for this type of mission, your operative doesn't really need to do much. Uh, there's a uh, there's another type of mission where the operative actually has to actively go around and touch things and hack them. Uh, this is not that mission. Oh, gotcha. So this is... We've got our, like, Wi-Fi smartphone up here doing science. <laughs> yeah. This is defend the Wi-Fi, basically. We gotta stop the friggin' hippies from trashing our node. Right. Uh, the operative, however, can do some stuff in this map. Um... There will be these little antennas that you'll see spinning around, emitting, I don't know, radio waves or whatever. And if you put the operative next to it, he can hack the little beacons, which will force the uh, exalt all to reload for one turn. Oh, neat! Yeah. So here's uh, Rio Delgado, our newest soldier. And uh, behind the objectives, do you see that thing spinning over there? Uh, yes. All right, if he goes over to one of those, he can hack it, and that disables XCOM weapons, or not XCOM weapons, exalt weapons for one turn. God, that's a lot of comm static. God. Twisted dial or something, for Moving God's sake. <laughs> What's wrong with you? They're all using mumble without push to talk. I'm trying to send a fax to a landline. <laughs> We're going to fight the power with poor phone discipline. I'll hail our alien overlords! Uh, well, Exalt's not exactly working for the, uh, aliens. Oh, we just, we just think they are. We just think they are. Uh... Actually, I think by this point in time, we're, we're pretty sure that they aren't, uh... Because if you remember, uh, was it Operation... Portent? Or, yeah, Portent. Uh... That was an Exalt convoy that had been ripped up by alien weapon fire. Oh, I see. And then we have that one dude that we uh, secured from that mission. Uh, you remember kind of what he looked like? Uh, kind of a suit, douchebag, bandana, you know? Oh, yes. Yeah, we're about to see a lot more of them. Oh, good! Yeah, those guys are back. Uh, I, was, I was hoping. I was I'm hoping watching. we'd get some closure to that story. It's going to be a while till we get to like the rest of the portent arc, but... Uh, we're definitely going to be seeing them. And this isn't necessarily related to the whole what the hell is that convoy doing, but it's the same people. Nice. Oh, Alright, get on up there, you garish purple robot. <laughs> oh, I remember this now. This is... Yeah. Come on, Cursor. Find, find the spot behind the cover. Oh, no. This no, is no. You ever find yourself in a perfect position to put it right where you want it, Skippy, but you just, you can't? I, uh, I have never put anything anywhere in my life, so I don't know. <laughs> hey, you got it! No, I, I just resorted to using the other stack of bricks as cover. Got it before. <laughs> well, I mean, look, 
sometimes, you know, you, you don't get the cover that you want, but the cover that you looks get like can still be, a series of you know, communications pretty good. Relays in the area. If our operative can get close enough and access the relay using the encryption keys they acquired from Exalt's data, they should be able to temporarily disrupt the enemy's comm network. I'm on so by disrupt the enemy's comm network, he means force all their weapons to malfunction somehow. Right. Bradford's one of those special people. You know, I mean, when when the app store goes down and you can't use your gun. <laughs> it's all, uh, what, genetically ID tagged? <laughs> Guns of the Patriots. <laughs> Never not Metal Gear Solid. I'm really surprised that I've gotten this far in the map and not found a single enemy. Yeah, for real. Are they all just playing cards over there or something? Or, I don't know. I wonder what Exalt does for their time off, you know? Like, well, we've stolen all this uh, alien technology. Let's do this. Sabotaged human governments. Uh, what do you guys want to do? Pinochle? You guys want to play Titanfall? Wow. Oh, yeah. I'm loving the armbands and the suit pants. Get owned. Get owned. Oh! Oh, that is. I love railguns. Oh, shut up, Vaughn. I advise extreme caution. They're exalted. They are the biggest goddamn pussies out there. Um, for the most of my LP, I've always been advising the cautious route, the defensive route. Something about Exalt does not trigger that response in me. In fact, it triggers the exact opposite. <laughs> Are you secretly scared of aliens? Is that the deal? Like, they make you shy? Uh, no. Maybe it's because uh, you can shut down their weapons pretty much at will. Yeah, once, uh, once, uh, come on, click on it. Click on it. Th come on, click it. it. Rio. Come on. Rio. Hack the Gibson, Rio. Hack the Gibson. Good man. Oh, there we go. Yeah. That should keep him Oh, that's right. You, uh, you speak phone. French, and Rio is French. Eh bien sûr. C'était quoi? Mon dieu. Il y a trois hommes. Oh, look at those guys piling up together. Oh. Oh. Shredder rocket? Uh... Yeah, absolutely. Oh. I might have been in trouble, but I hacked their communications, so, uh... Exalt forces are in position to hack the encoder. <laughs> oh no, they're hacking our Gibson now. Oh no. Oh, and here comes a, uh, a very special thing. Uh, well, okay, wait, that wasn't what I thought it was. Uh, but... Uh, Exalt have soldier classes just like XCOM do. Uh, or does. Grammar. And so, here is this one that I was thinking of. They even have supports Cute. that he heaves uh, smoke grenades. Yeah. Enemy reinforcements are closing in. That one's got a sniper rifle. That was a support. They've got heavies that actually have rocket launchers. Oh goodness. So that's that's kind of a lot of them all at once. It um. <laughs> so uh, here's the thing about trying to rocket launch them. Um, that encoder? Yes. See how it's kind of flashing green? Yes. <laughs> we don't want to hit it with a rocket because it's ours. Yeah. Oh. Don't friendly fire the, the internet. Yeah, yeah. So, the little dance. Oh, yes. Yeah. Come on. Just gotta hope he doesn't miss one in ten chance. Oh. Yeah, they got about, what, four or five of them? That, uh, that was a nice little bit of damage right there. Heading there now. Absolutely. Not bad. I think I actually meant to use the standard rocket and not the shredder rocket, but whatever. Explosions. Oh, it all mm -hmm. works. It's not like they got robots. No, they in fact do not have robots. Whereas you have, uh, two robots. Yeah. Let's take them out. Oh, oh no. Are you, are you gonna pulp a tiny man? Oh, absolutely. Oh. One sec, got to get a good camera angle here. So. Oh, actually, oh god, this one. Oh! What did you? <laughs> I punched him into the encoder. <laughs> I punched him through a wall and into the encoder. <laughs> this episode brought to you by Alienware. <laughs> I was just staring at that in disbelief, like, what the fuck? I just killed that by punching a man into it. That was the most amazing thing I've ever seen. <laughs> so if you punch a guy into his buddies, will that damage all of them? I don't think you can hit other people with flying buddies, oh, no. That fucking sucks. Yeah, that that really was upsetting. Well, that's the uh, 
That's the number one comedy moment of the LP so far. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> Felt real, real good about that one. My grandkids are gonna be talking about this. Remember the time that Uncle Jade Star punched a guy through a computer? <laughs> yes, I do. Little Uncle Jed Star, huh? Am I planning on marrying into your family tree somewhere? Uh, I mean, I, I think you'll be like an honorary uncle. Uh, oh, okay, excellent. Just for that. Uh, I'll definitely come to your wedding, you know? Oh, thanks. Get drunk, say embarrassing things about you. Definitely. Yeah. Refer to me as baby corn for some reason. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah! That is why I love the railgun right there. So good. Feels so satisfying to kill people with that. Uh, you remember that guy that dropped in behind our covert operative way over here? That could be a problem. I do. Yeah, let's let's go solve that problem. Oh, do let's. I love watching you solve problems. Let's do this. <laughs> you make that sound so uh... dirty. I know. A little bit, yeah. Hey, what's up, friend? A little run and gun trap bar, yeah. Oh. Oh yeah, he didn't like that. No, that's why you always rapid fire. Never not rapid fire. <laughs> you disrupted the enemy communications network. It'll oh, what's this? Uh, Exalt, you can't shoot at me for a second turn in a row. Ah, oh, screw you. You guys. You poor little munchkins. Yeah, being able to disable their weapons pretty much whenever you want uh, really, really hurts them. Yeah, I'm not terribly surprised. You know, that you're not scared of these guys. It's just... They don't... They don't survive very well. I mean, you fight them in larger numbers than you fight the aliens. Like, I think we had, what, like, eight of them running around? At least, yeah. But they just die so much easier. Um, and then you can hack their weapons. It's, it's just, it's hard to take these guys as seriously as... A group of aliens. Oh, definitely. I mean, they don't kind of induce the same kind of ball clenching terror that a pack of chrysalids spawning right behind you does. Right. But here, look at this bullshit. Oh, what? Yeah. We're all the way on the other side of the map punching our firmware, uh, and then these guys helicopter in right next to the transmitter. Yeah, I'm sure I could win missions too if I could drop right at the extraction zone. Yeah. Like, sure, okay, whatever, guys. Cheating suckers. Well, let's have a little bit more fun with the whole punch thing. Punch two. Punch two. Revenge of the punch. Punchy fist Roger returns. Boom! Oh! <laughs> oh no! It's like kicking a puppy. This is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Just a tiny little idiot human, like, ah, oh, what's, uh, what's going on? Oh, no! <laughs> and the punch does so much damage, it, it's just so great. There's 12 damage, that's absurd. It gets upgraded to do more later on, too. <laughs> oh my god. Alright. <laughs> Gotta hurry over to the transmitter, though, and unfortunately, some of my people aren't that fast. My heavy, and then the, uh... The flamethrower mech, I mean, just does not move nearly as quick. Nah, which is kind of a bummer. Yeah. Also, France, uh, home of the world's strongest porta potty. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. The French, uh, the French know their toilets, <laughs> or uh, toilette, as they call them. Uh, dual commentary of it made available in, Fr in French by Skippy Granola. Oh, yeah, no problem. I, uh, I like to be multilingual. It's, uh, it's the official languages act. The what? Seriously? Uh, yeah, yeah. All my, uh, LP commentary has to be, you know, 50%, uh, French and English. Oh, It's like a cereal box. Do you also get hit by the uh, can Canadian content laws? Uh, yeah, that's why I'm actually listening to uh, Nickelback right now. <laughs> um, I, I don't like it. I, but you have to. I, I mean, who else am I going to listen to? Um, Celine Dion? Oh, man. Hang on. One second. 
<laughs> oh no. Let me just uh Commander, Exalt forces are in position to hack the transmitter. We need to stop them before they wipe our data. Go <laughs> uh, just in case you're too busy by Celine Dion there, uh, their heavy actually hit us with hollow targeting. Well, <laughs> at hollow targeting, huh? Yeah, so they actually have some of the same skills our soldiers get. They picked the, uh, they picked the inferior ones, though, eh? Clearly. <laughs> so, it's, it's a good thing they're not watching the, uh, Commander's Guide to XCOM. <laughs> I think it'd be fun. Uh, this is the Exalt Guide to XCOM. Uh, guys, stop leaving these stupid relays around that uh, get you disabled for a turn everywhere. So uh, and there's like four of them on the map. I, I was thinking maybe it wouldn't be a good idea if uh, if if we had our guns linked up to our Blackberries. Um. <laughs> Trying to get the collateral aim to hit this guy, but uh, or collateral damage, but I can't get it over the uh, the railing on the little platform he's on. Oh, uh, yeah. So, screw it. Just get closer so we can punch him next turn. Charge in. Who dares wins. Who dares gets to punch. <laughs> he who punches first punches best. Absolutely. It's not the first punch that matters. It's the, it's last, the last punch. Yeah! Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I gotta be, make sure I don't grenade the transmitter. Yeah, please don't destroy this one. Yeah. I'm just gonna say when I get back, tell Bradford there were some punches, <laughs> mistakes happened, people went flying. He's all like, "Tiny Turtle, my office now." <laughs> well, I haven't even strapped my legs on. What's going on? <laughs> just walking around base with like uh, half of his cybernetic limbs on. He's just squinking around like a worm. <laughs> I think someone drew fan art to that effect. <laughs> It was just Tiny laying on the ground as a stump with, like, the other members, like, each holding one of his limbs laughing at him. <laughs> oh, Tiny Turtle. I swear, the minute I get into my robot pants... Mmm, the rare pistol kill. Oorah is right. Really miss the extra movement granted by the punch fist. Yeah, it's true, but I mean, on the upside, you get a flamethrower. Yeah, uh, this is kind of a subject of debate uh, amongst mech aficionados, but <laughs> general consensus is that the uh, the fist is much better. <laughs> I really kind of have to agree. Uh, I tend to put the uh, flamethrower only ever on uh, support mechs, because they've got that, uh, that aura of cover around them. Right. So they don't need to be moving quite as fast as others. They don't need to be separated from the team, they should stay close, and so they don't need the movement boost. Yeah, totally. But still, the, the flamethrower isn't that great in comparison. It has a, f a few fair moments when it shines, if you can get stuff clustered up, but uh, so it's a little rare. Yeah, that group of five dudes, for instance, would have been a really good time for the flamethrower, but that's so rare that that happens yeah. in range. Did that guy go off the building? I he might have, which is un <laughs> unfortunate. Uh, my plan was to actually try to capture him. Oh, well, his gun's there. He's off the building. Yeah, he's dead. Yeah. Because uh, he was right next to my assault with the arc thrower, so I was hoping I could shoot that guy and not kill him. But uh, it'd be oops. really awesome to tase one of these guys. It would be. Uh, spoilers not happening in this video. Ah, uh, well. At this point, I was just playing around with them, though, so... <laughs> next next video with Exalt, maybe we'll try to tase one of them. But, uh... Tase them all. Just capture the entire thing. Police action. Just have our own little ant colony back at base of Exalt's. But this guy instead, you'll go ahead and set him on fire. Oh, absolutely. It's like, I can't punch, but I can totally set you on fire. That is incredibly brutal. Uh, I find it a little underwhelming. Like, uh, I think it needs more horrific, scarred, burned corpses. Kind of like, um... Uh, what was the game that had terrible, terrible burned people? Uh, 50 Cent Blood on the Sand had terrible burned people. Oh, yes. That were uncomfortable to look at after they've been burned. It's pretty bad, yeah. The Last of Us was pretty bad for that, too. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. 
that is what I was really hoping for. You know, they just kind of fall over. I, I want some real screams and nightmare stuff happening when those people get set on fire, you know? Thrashing, running around, just, oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. That's really exciting, actually. Again, I was just dicking around with this guy. So there's a sniper over there, and I'm just going to flashbang him. <laughs> just so that Tiny can get closer to him, and uh, I was going to try to punch him off of the building with Tiny. Oh, yes. Is he going? I think I heard something. Okay, thanks a lot, Terminator. <laughs> yeah. I think I heard something. You mean that guy that we know is over there that we flashbanged? You think he's over there? Thanks. Well, this is why he's not our covert operative. <laughs> Mechs can't be covert operatives, but yeah. Oh. You can stick yeah, they'd be real subtle, jacket. right? Yeah. You can stick a stylish jacket on him, and you can just have robot hands. Like, ah, don't worry about it. Yeah. I'm a quadruple amputee. Never mind the fact that my boss did it to me. <laughs> Volunteer. Ah, see now the sniper has unfortunately made me very unhappy. Because he is in a position that I can't punch him off the edge right there. Oh. Because there's this little battery box or something between him and the wall. So, I wanted to give it a try anyway, but no. I can't punch more than a square away. Oh no. Yeah. What if you punch the battery into him and then... Uh, I wish, but you can't just randomly punch terrain. You actually need a target. Well, don't that just beat all. I was very upset. Just so very sad. I couldn't punch him off the building. I really wanted to punch him off the building. I'm starting to feel that XCOM might not be the flawless, beautiful game that I thought it was. <laughs> hey, friend. Oh, oh, point blank miss. That's gotta hurt. It's gotta hurt even more knowing that you're gonna get punched in the gaunch by a robot, and that's how you're gonna die. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna meet the devil with a robot fist lodged in your ass, man. <laughs> I was really hoping he'd move, though, so I had some other opportunity to try to punch him off the building. If he just hops out of cover, tries to surrender. <laughs> He's like, Sacre bleu, je me rends. How do you say we surrender in French, or I surrender? Je me rends. Oh, okay. So that, that was what you were saying. Okay, sure. Yeah, the, uh, right. the phrase is se rendre, which is where it comes from. How about, uh, not in the face? Pardon le visage. Oh, mon dieu. It looks like that was the last of Exalt's forces in the area. Ah, uh, didn't quite get him off the roof, though. Ah, uh, well. You'll get him next time, Tiger. <laughs> <laughs> but that that was kind of a fun mission, a little bit sloppy on my side since I was trying to showboat a little bit. At least nobody died. Right. I, I wasn't uh, I wasn't afraid of anybody on my side dying, but it, it certainly came as a surprise that I uh, punched a dude into the encoder. <laughs> that uh, that made the LP right there. I uh, I certainly hope so. Damn good ground, of course. Always damn good ground. No brainer and. Uh, we already went through these, but uh, advanced fire control because I like shooting people on Overwatch with my uh, with my mechs. Yes. And our operative becomes a heavy, so he can no longer ever do operative missions again. <laughs> I am never going back there. But that uh, that does give me a surplus of heavies. I now have. Uh... Oh hey, we also got a hundred bucks and panic reduced by one in France. But I now have three high quality heavies. Uh, I think. Either Rio Delgado or um, we'll see the one. Isobel might get a mech. Looks like nice. this was just a small part of their wider reaching clandestine operation. We did manage to find some clues as to the location of Exalt's headquarters, though. If we can track down more of their cells and collect additional intel, we'll be able to narrow down the possibilities and take out Exalt once and for all. Essentially, we get to play uh, Where's Waldo with their HQ. <laughs> uh, every time you complete a mission, you get a clue about where they are, uh, and then you have to try to find their headquarters, and you can make a guess and raid a country to find their headquarters. If you're wrong, though, the country gets pissed and immediately withdraws from the council. Wow! So, <laughs> kind of want to be right. Yeah. So we got a great hint for the first one. 
uh, exalt base not in Asia. That eliminates like a full quarter of the uh, places they could be. That's a great hint. It is. I think that's going to wrap it up for today with the emergence of Exalt, some gene mods happening, uh, some hilarious punching malfunctions happening. What a special It's been a good episode. day. Yeah, it was, it was. Our uh, our fluffy guinea pig gene mod soldiers will be uh, will be there next time. I'm going to cuddle them. <laughs> so thank you, Skippy, for joining me on a very special episode. I had a stellar time. Thank you so much. And I'll, I'll make sure to get you anytime uh, Guava Moments being a, a lazy crybaby. I am at your disposal, Commander. <laughs> And uh, thank everybody for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. Keep it real, kids.